Hello everyone, I am Nayana Agarwal, one of the fellows at University of Florida, and I have the pleasure of talking to Dr. Debrata Mukherjee from Texas Tech University, uh, who's agreed to join us on the Fit on the Go. So, Dr. Mukherjee, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Nayan. Good to be here. Yeah. So, we'll be talking about uh, early invasive versus late invasive for non-STEMIs and unstable angina. Um, so, Dr. Mukherjee, any thoughts with all these uh, new trials coming in? Which is the way to go, early or late, or very early as the riddle and STEMI tells us about? Right, so the strategy to treat patients with unstable angina, non-STEMI, could be either take them to the cath lab, which would be invasive therapy or early invasive therapy, or conservative therapy initially or initial medical management where you treat them optimally medically and then risk stratify them with a stress test and then decide based on the results of the stress test. In general, if you look at the two extremes, the patients who are very sick, very high risk, hemodynamically unstable, ongoing ischemia, ongoing angina, it's easy. You take them to the cath lab emergently, literally treat them like STEMI within a few hours. On the other hand of the spectrum are the low risk patients, maybe no troponin elevation or minimal troponin elevation, unremarkable EKG, I think it's reasonable to treat them initially with medical therapy and risk stratify them. It's the intermediate risk patients which probably need the most risk stratification. And at least in the US, we tend to take them to the cath lab, whether within 24 hours or 72 hours. A good stratifying method would be to use the GRACE risk score, where if the risk score is more than 140, I think those patients benefit going to the cath lab early than later versus those with GRACE risk score less than 140. You may want to either delay taking them to the cath lab for after 24 hours or may consider further risk stratification. I think by taking the patient to the cath lab, what you get is anatomic information and by using technology like FFR, also hemodynamic information about their plaque. And you have the option of definitely treating them. If you treat them conservatively, they will need risk stratification and based on the results of the stress test, you may eventually take them to the cath lab anyway. Thank you so much for those comments. I have one more question for you on this topic. So do you think the all the mortality and outcome data on this is getting diluted by the fact that a lot of times in all these studies, other than riddle and STEMI as far as I know, the data gets diluted that we club the unstable angina and non-STEMI patients together because I would think that the outcomes for these should be different because one is infarction, one is only angina. So any thoughts or comments on that, please? Certainly. Troponin positivity or biomarker positivity is probably one of the most important prognostic markers in patients with acute coronary syndrome. And if you take lower risk unstable angina patients, they may actually behave like more like stable ischemic heart disease patients. And you'll get incremental benefit the higher the risk. And certainly troponin elevation identifies that subpopulation with higher risk. Having said that, the mortality reduction might be harder because we have such effective medical therapies now that the incremental benefit of technology or PCI is still there but lower and for us to devise a trial to show mortality reduction will take many thousands of patients. But I do believe that PCI or definitely, definitively treating the lesion does improve outcomes in these patients and certainly in troponin positive patients or the non-STEMI patients. Thank you so much for talking to us today, Dr. Mukherjee. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. For more such videos, please log on to YouTube slash fitsonthego.com. Thank you. All right, Nate.